The Fast Track Bill would expedite the approvals process for major infrastructure projects. Yesterday, Shane Jones doubled down, announcing the government's also ending a ban on petroleum exploration off Taranaki. My message to the oil and gas industry is that you have a champion in Matua Shane Jones. Stand with me and then we'll put this um, eco-rebel to sleep. The fact that these protesting barnacles don't want an open dialogue, I think, speaks to the weakness of their argument and fear that I'm winning the hearts and minds of Kiwis over. As, as you saw in recent weeks, you know, we talked very openly about um, and, you know, the, gas, um, the, the weak gas supplies we have across New Zealand and the implications and challenges for that. Uh, the reality for us is that, yes, we have high levels of renewables. We want to double those amount of renewables. But for the foreseeable future, at least I think for you know, 10 to 15 to 20 years, gas is going to be a very important transitory fuel for New, Zealanders, New Zealand to be able to make that transition. And frankly, if you don't use gas, you end up using coal, which is a lot worse. So the point is it's a really pragmatic example where you can come out and make a decision, ban oil and gas, you can have some bumper stickers and some headlines as the previous administration did, but there was no plan to follow it up to say, well, how does that deliver energy security to New Zealand and New Zealanders? Uh, and so what we've seen is you know, a diminution of gas. That is a real worry to us because that means that then we're going to be burning more coal. Uh, that's not something that we want to be doing. Uh, and so to be able to open up the oil and gas ban so that we can access more gas to support us in that transition is important. We are very determined, first and foremost, to double the amount of renewables in this country. We have abundant natural resources. We've been abysmal at actually developing them and getting those projects consented, as I've kept talking about. That's why I'm a big believer in the fast track uh, legislation that's been going through. Secondly, uh, we have to acknowledge the reality, which is as much as we would, you know, would like not to to deal with it. The reality is that we still use gas in our system because as high as we are relative to the rest of the world on renewables, it's still not 100%. Uh, and that last 5%, that is, is incredibly difficult to do um, when you're relying on natural resources, with um, whether it's rained enough or whether it's been windy enough or sunny enough. So we do need gas to keep our lights on. Uh, and as you've seen with the decision that was made before, those gas reserves have now run down. Uh, and so we are just being practical and pragmatic to say, in order to make this transition, uh, what we don't want to be doing is burning a lot of coal. If we can burn gas instead, it's not nearly as good as uh, renewables, get it? But it's certainly a hell of a lot better than coal. The reality is 20% of the current energy electricity system depends on gas. Uh, we destroyed our sovereign risk profile with that unwise, shallow decision of five or six years ago. We're going to go ahead with changing the law. Oil and gas exploration, if we can entice further investment into the sector, is going to build resilience. We can't get any more sun and wind within a short period of time unless we pass the fast track, which sadly was opposed by the Lotus Eaters yesterday over the weekend in Queen Street. New Zealand is at an inflection point. Do you want the lights to stay on? So if you do, do you want to use natural gas, an indigenous resource, or do you want to rely on Indonesian coal? That is what is happening as we speak. The power you and I take for granted every day is now being created by Indonesian coal. It's not being created by unicorn kisses as the Green Party would have you believe. Look, five million Kiwis want the lights to stay on. They don't want the country to deindustrialize. Our quality of living will diminish markedly unless we can secure a consistent source of energy. I'm not deprecating the efforts of other countries, although I would say to you, that uh, Germany, as we speak, is refiring the coal power stations because they made an egregious error in their own energy policy. We've had the worst energy minister in my lifetime in the form of Megan, and we're turning around what is a pretty parlous state of affairs. I mean, let's not sugarcoat the fact that our economic situation is dire. Uh, I respect Chloe's perspective. I find it difficult to understand. It kind of comes across as alphabet soup. We are opening up for oil and gas. We are changing the law. We are opening up the dock estate in appropriate places in Taranaki. We are not taking a risk with the unicorn kissing type of approach that characterizes the left wing approach to energy. We are relying as we speak on Indonesian coal. I don't want to make a moral judgment about that. I get my information on the basis of science, technology and rationalism, not on this kind of piety and this level of earnestness, which is actually going to undermine our ability to enjoy a first world quality of existence. Uh, the gas industry is a legitimate and credible part of New Zealand. I suspect that it'll be around till 2050. And that will ensure that we can fund and move forward on a transition that doesn't ruin New Zealand's solvency, destroy jobs. Kiwis have had a guts full. 
of the hypnotic type of thinking that has blighted energy policy over the last six years. Mark my words, out in talkback land, every household in New Zealand knows that the approach I'm reflecting, hard-headed though it may be, is better than this climate purgatory vision that Chloe and her ilk put around. Does the government still stand by its policy to double renewable electricity generation in this country? Obviously, the government sees a mix and match. We'll have more gas, hopefully lessening our reliance on coal, but we are not going to rely on windy rhetoric or solar dreams that are akin to unicorn kisses without having a nation that generates solvency and hard-headed economic outcomes. End of story.